Hello, I am Obian Rick from the Physics Department of Kern University. I welcome you to C++ Digest video tutorials. With these tutorials, I intend to help you develop the skill in programming in C++. All you have to do is to sit back, relax, and enjoy. There is a WhatsApp group for this course and uh, if you would like to join just test your details as shown on the screen to the number showing and uh, you will be added. Alright, let's get started. Now before we get into programming itself, I want us to review our knowledge or uh, what, uh, what we know on a computer so when we talk of a computer what is it right now I assume that every viewer of this tutorial is having is, is a computer literate and then uh, knows something about a computer at least you can type you can use a mouse you can boot your PC then you are good to go so basically a computer is an electronic device that is a cute command or you can also say it is a programmable device that can be programmed to carry out a set of arithmetic and logic operations what are the functions of a computer what are the functions of a computer now if you look at the diagram I have on screen as a schematic representation of the four main functions of a computer now a computer basically performs four main functions it accepts input now the input it has it accepts and the input a computer accepts is called data when it accepts the input it processes the data is that okay processes the data to produce output now depending on the kind of input or data you are working on you would have a specific output for example your output can be in the form of sound it can be in the form of a video it can be in the form of text whatever comes out depends on what you want to do so what the computer produces is what we call information so the computer takes input as data and produces output as information now sometimes the information that is being produced would have to be stored for future use or for transport if i talk of transport i mean taking it from one machine to another or even sending that information via the internet and uh, sometimes to during processing there would be a need to take or retrieve an information from the storage so we have input processing output and storage these are the four main functions of every computer these are the four main functions of every computer some computers are made specially to perform a particular function those kind of computers are called specialized computers and um, basically they do one of these two things they, they do these things here so basically a computer accepts data it processes the data and produces an information that that information can be stored now remember the information of one processing activity can be the data for another is that right information from one for one processing activity can be the data for another all right now what are the main parts of a computer i believe everyone listening to this tutorial knows the main parts of a computer so when we talk of the part of a computer two things come in mind we have the hardware then we have the software now the software is divided into two parts we have system software which include 
operating systems like Windows, Linux, Unix, Ubuntu, and all those other guys. Then we also have application software. These are programs that are written to perform specific tasks. Okay, so one we consider computer hardware what are the major categories there are four major groupings of computer hardware the uh, uh, any computer hardware will fall under one of these we have processing storage input and output and memory devices now when we talk of um, hardware these are the physical parts of the computer that can be touched is that okay so we have uh, the cpu if we take the cpu we have it is made up of the alu that is arithmetic logic unit cu that is control unit and registers now the cpu is referred to as the brain of the computer that is where processing actually happens the speed of your pc depends on your processor the higher the processor speed the faster your computer processor speed is measured in megahertz gigahertz and all those things so if you want a really powerful computer then uh, you have to seek a really powerful cpu then we have the main memory in case you haven't seen a physical memory before this is a memory now this is also an intel core 2 duo processor this is a memory it's the same thing here it's a memory or ram random access memory all right that random access memory then we also have secondary storage devices in, such as the hard disk drive disks and cd roms and the USB flash drive. Then we have input and output devices such as keyboard, mouse, monitor, and the printer. All these 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 groupings forms the main component or main parts of a computer hardware. When we come to the software too, we have like I said previously the system software and application software now the system software manages your hardware for example the operating system controls your hardware the operating system controls the hardware without the operating system the hardware is just a piece of metal the computer hardware cannot work without an operating system so the operating system kind of set out the environment for your application softwares to operate system software can be divided into two we have the operating system and utilities when we talk of operating system we have types like the mac os the linux unix ios android and freebsd these are all operating system software they sit directly on your hardware and controls your hardware and other resources then we have utilities utilities are usually programs that perform the housekeeping stuff of your machine they run as services or demon tools on the background produce services like um cleanups scanning of drives and other things then we have the application software application software is written or developed to perform a specific task for example if we take internet browsers the application software is for surfing the internet of a browser database programs or applications are used for storing data web processor is used for generating documents then for example i'm using powerpoint right now and powerpoint is designed to help in doing presentation so these are all application software so take note system software helps manage your computer resources and it also intermediates your application software and your computer hardware and one thing you should know application software cannot run directly on the hardware without 
a system software now the language of the computer if I press key M what actually goes into the computer's memory and one thing you have to note is that before a program can work on anything that thing has to be loaded into the RAM that is the random access memory so if I press key M what actually does the computer see now computer operates based on two types of electric signals now these signals we have um, analog signals which is a continuous waveforms used to represent things like sound is that right so uh, our audio tapes which we usually call the cassettes store data in analog signals now digital signals represent information in a sequence of zeros and ones digital signals have lots of advantages over the analog the computer uses the digital signals to do its processing so these digital signals is how we call the machine language the machine language that is actually the language the computer speaks and uh, it is nothing but a sequence of zeros and ones called binary digits or bits for short now a sequence of zeros and ones is sometimes called the binary code or binary number so if I press the character 2 or the uh, ca character M on my keyboard what actually goes into the computer memory is 01101101 is that right this is the ASCII representation of the letter or character M and that is what the computer sees it doesn't see this M it sees zeros and ones now what is the unit of measurements in computing like I said a computer or the machine language involves sequence of ones and zeros is that right now a zero or one is called a bit when we have a sequence of eight bits we get what we, what is called a byte so a byte is a unique arrangement of eight bits thousand bytes approximately thousand bytes gives us a kilobyte but the actual value is ten uh, thousand and twenty four bytes approximately one million bytes gives us a megabyte approximately 1 billion byte gives us a gigabyte then approximately 1 trillion byte gives us a terabyte so this tutorial was to refresh your mind on um, or to review computer where the computer is because uh, there are some of these things that we shall be using and there is a need for you to know all right this is the end of this tutorial and don't forget to send your comments suggestions and questions on my whatsapp group or facebook page c plus plus digest thank you see you in the next tutorial